Hello everyone, welcome back to Magic the Gathering Arena, playing uh, Quick Draft Midnight Hunt here. This, uh, this, uh, this account could afford to play some more Premier Dominaria, I don't know. Playing a game of Midnight Hunt made me like, oh, let's play that again. Hostile, hostile, I don't believe this is any good, right? It's, uh, un it's colorless, or pay one, tap, and sack, to put a soul counter. If there are three soul counters, transform it into a 3-7 creature that can dodge removal. And when it attacks, you can exile a creature from your graveyard to drain your opponent. Huh. I mean, it is a potential win condition. Uh, huh. This actually doesn't look so bad. Right? I mean, it doesn't fit in every deck, but it gives you something to do with the decayed zombies that you get in a number of the decks. So, especially, like, blue-black is going to probably be fine with this. Um, and, like, white-black has a lot of tokens that it wants to sacrifice. I could absolutely see taking this. I, I wonder if I've never gotten the opportunity before or if I never just read it carefully enough, but obviously it's slow. Um, but it's, you know, there are slow games in this format sometimes, and it's a land. It doesn't even take up a spell slot. All right, what else do we have? Okay, I'd rather have a Dreadhound. Uh, Dreadhound has just been bananas every time I've taken it. I mean, six mana is a lot. But I, six mana and double black. But I, I, I mean, I still think it's better enough than the hostile. I kind of want to take this just because, like, it's a land and it could go in any deck. But, like, the advantage of taking Dreadhound is that the decks it goes in will have a Dreadhound in them, <laughs> uh, which is pretty cool. Beggar's okay. Winterthorn Blessing. Remind me what this does. Puts a counter on something. It taps something. And keeps it tapped for a bit. So it's like a stun counter thing. Clearing Cathar is not that great. Morning Patrol. It's an okay Disturbed card. Organ Hoarder. we got to take the Organ Hoarder, right? Rotten Reunion is not very good. I've, I've run this. It's fine uh, in the right deck, but I don't know. Graveyard Hate is pretty good in this format, but this is still just a card that only Graveyard Hates, which is not really what you're looking for. What is a Brood Weaver? A 4-mana 2-4 with Reach that turns into a 1-2 with Reach. Sure. Grafkeeper is a pretty strong Disturb card, as I recall. Gavany Silversmith. Fine for Coven decks. I mean, good in general, but especially for Coven decks. Defenestrate. We love removal, and it's in black. Ghoulish Procession. Oh, no. I mean, so, like, Ghoulish Procession is... is I have had decks where I've run, like, two or three Ghoulish Procession, and they're crazy. Uh, but it doesn't fit in every deck. And Diagraph Horde is just good in every black deck. This is a Graveyard Hate card that's also just, like, insane. Right? You get a 5-mana 3-4, which is fine. Uh, I mean, you know, stat-wise, that's about what you would pay for what, what, what you would pay for a 3-4. And it also comes with two Decayed 2-2s. Two and then it also has this Graveyard Hate effect. Really nice card. Gavney Dawnguard still being here is a little surprising. But I'll take another Diagraph Horde. Hobbling Zombie, also totally fine. I guess I could try to curve down a little bit. Pick up the 3-drop instead of the 5-drop. But I don't know yet what I'm going to need curve-wise. And like I think Diagraph Horde is a better card. I'll take another Diagraph Horde. Okay. Kind of feel like I have enough of those now. Flip the switch is all right. Hmm. I mean, 
Shady Traveler is just, A, it's nice to have a three drop, something a little bit light <laughs> compared to the rest of the deck. And it's really good at night. Three mana for a 4-4 four, four menace is insane. Obviously, that's not what this creature is. It's something else, but... Huh. Wait a minute. These aren't wheeling. I've seen these cards before, but this is still my first time looking at this pack, so I saw other copies of these cards. I don't really have any particular use for zombies yet. And I also don't have a lot of non-token creatures, so I don't think I should take that. Corpse Cobble, though, is kind of a hilarious... I've been, I've been gotten by this card a couple times. Where, like, I'm at 5 life or something. Or, or 7. You know, some, like, not huge number. A number that is low, but not, like, perilously low most of the time. And the opponent has, like, you know, they've been attacking me because they're the aggro deck. So all their stuff is, well, I'm not sure I'm exactly describing the scenario correctly. But, like, I don't know. They have a big creature that would be lethal if it could hit me. So I leave back a blocker and I'm, like, attacking with everything else. And then they corpse cobble some decayed zombies combining them with the big creature at instant speed at the end of my turn to get them a giant menace creature and swing skipping my blocker because I only have one and like that's pretty annoying but I don't I don't like think that that happens all that often <laughs> uh, a large zombie is totally fine Uh, Blood Pact, I guess, is all right. I don't know if this deck really needs draw, but maybe. I don't think I really want to run Reunion either. Another Shady Traveler is good. So would be an Evolving Wilds. Well, let's just take some more cheaper creatures. Not good. The Hobbling Zombie Wield. That's great news. Some good red cards wheeling as well. Don't need a ghoulish procession. I would love a sea zombie. Look at all the zombie tokens I'm going to have. Oh my gosh. That would be so great. Plus a two drop. Um, Arrogant Outlaw is decent. What the hell are you? Oh, that's... Um, I mean, it's a, it's a good card. I should take this card. Um, sometimes like this turns out bad like they remove it and you just gave them a free 1-1 one, one. but other times it's you know it just completely stops them from doing anything because they want to like attack with 30k zombies or something you're like alright I'll just get a bunch of 1-1 one, one counters um, and there's not much else here the outlaw and the traveler are fine but the slaughter specialist that you don't get to play with it that often it's exciting. We have in blue, by the way, one organ hoarder and one larder zombie. So I should be open to the possibility that, like, we actually belong in red black. Red black. Like, I should have maybe paid more attention while I was sideboarding those red cards. Um, like, I think hungry for more is pretty good. Especially with something like Dreadhound, which cares about creatures dying, and this is like a spell that makes a creature that dies as part of its deal. You know, I, though, Vivisection is also really good if you're just like overrun with with two two zombies, right? So the question is, if I'm in blue-black, like, this is a good card to have. I should be happy to take it. But the question is, am I running my blue? Or should I be looking more at, like, black-red? Because I could take Burn the Accursed, or I could take the Behemoth to, like, be less in blue. 
Or I could take, I think Hungry for More would, would be better than the Behemoth. Well, I don't know. Like, we should, we should always have a token for this, right? So this is a 5 mana, 7, 6 menace. I think it's great. Yeah, I think it's probably better than Vivisection. Sea Zombie looks great. Could we actually run Mono Black? I don't want the Tome that much. Morbid Opportunist? Pick five? Okay. I accept. This is incredible. The Scoundrel's pretty good, as I recall. Yeah, maybe we're just Mono Black. I don't know. <laughs> um, electric Revelation? Do I want a flyer? No? Consider's okay. Crawl from the Cellar and Sea Zombie are both great here. Do I need the like long-term value of Crawl from the Cellar? Or would I rather just have like more Sea Zombies to make sure that I always have one? There's also consider if I like want to actually commit to blue, but I'm kind of thinking like maybe I'll just run black and splash one or two blue cards, and in that context, consider is not very good. I mean. I think I could just use more two drops. Like, you don't want to trade Sea Zombie. You want to use it to, like, ping him every turn. But you have to play some two drops to get to the point where the board is static enough that you can do that. See, this plays a two drop. It trades against some Boros thing. And then later you get another Sea Zombie that you can actually use for its intended purpose. Ghoulish Procession, I still don't think is very good in this deck. Is it? I mean... I guess it is getting better, actually. We have the Behemoths and um, Morbid Opportunist that like the zombie tokens, and the Sea Zombie likes them. And I have, like, some creatures will die. Keep in mind this includes opponent's creatures. Yeah, I think I should take a procession. I don't really care for Blade Brand. Um, Shady Traveler is fine. I mean, larger zombie. I don't. I don't think I'm running them. It's pretty cool to like cycle, or to use them for, to like sift for the right cards. What am I? Am I running any of this? No. But I think running blue in the deck right now is too much of an imposition. Mysterious Tome. Secrets of the Key. They're both draw cards. Mysterious Tome is probably better. But like, are, are these red cards that I have any good? I don't really want the Foragers. Electric Revelation is fine. Oh, I could run the Blood Pact for draw. I think that's probably good. Yeah, I don't I don't want any of these. So like I have red cards, but they're not playable. That's why they're over there. Not just because I wasn't sure I would play red. Because I wasn't sure they would be good even if I did. Um I think I'll take the tome. It will take a long time to draw three cards the way Secrets of the Key would, would do, but like to draw three with Secrets of the Key, you have to cast it twice, that's five mana, and use up six clue tokens, that's 11 mana, right? This 
you play it for three, and then three times you can pay two. That's six to draw three cards. Now, the thing is, in between those, you have to... Sorry, did I say it's six? It's nine. Three plus th thrice two, right? Three plus six is nine. In between those, you have to also spend two mana um, on, like, the tap, the transform side, right? To tap things. But you're actually getting good value out of those taps. So it's like nine mana to draw three, which is the same as Secrets of the Key, but, it, but you... Also, which, which costs 11 on Secrets of the Key. Um, <clears throat> so you, you, it's 9 mana to match the 11 mana Secrets of the Key would give you. And you do have to spend 2 more mana along the way, but you get, you get value out of that. Now, of course, most of the time, neither of those is getting all of their cards on the same turn, Right? Secrets of the Key, you kind of cast when you have a mana lying around. Then you blow up the clue token when you have some mana to spare. And then when you have a bunch of mana to spare, you flash it back. I guess I should mouse over that. Right? When, when you have a bunch of mana to spare, you flash it back. And then when you have mana to spare, you use the clue tokens again. So it's not clear over how many turns you get the value with the two cards. Secrets of the Key, you can make it as condensed as you want. <clears throat> like if you top deck this in the super late game when you already have 10 lands it's way better than the tome um, but the tome is a lot better I think in the early game because you don't really have time you don't have the mana to really pound on either of them and it's the fact that this one is slower doesn't matter that much and it's more efficient and lasts longer so I don't know. I think I'd rather have the Tome than the Secrets of the Key. Bat Whisperer is also like maybe reasonable, but we don't really have the deck for it. I think I'll take Mysterious Tome. The second blue card we're splashing. <laughs> Triad's Retrieval? I don't know. Eaten Alive is great. Oh my god, give that to me. Bloodline Calling. Three mana... Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's like three mana kill anything, right? Um, it also could blow up everybody's decayed zombie tokens, which I'm unlikely to want, but, you know, it could happen. Uh, archivist. Right, so this thing is a three mana three two that loots. And then it disturbs to a 2-1 flyer that loots. I've had trouble with this card in the past I, somehow where, like, I got it on the board, and that was lovely. And then somehow I, like, couldn't get it to die, or maybe I just was never going to have the mana to, to cast it for disturb. Or maybe I just, like, forgot it had a disturb half, and so I never attacked with it when I should have. I, I don't remember. But I remember having this on the board and, like, it being stuck. Or maybe they had flyers and so disturbing wouldn't be useful. I don't know. It seems like a pretty good card, though. Um, Bloodline Calling is also pretty good. I don't think we need the Amalgam. We already have win conditions. I don't need another a fourth Sea Zombie as much as some removal. Because what I have for removal right now is, like, Eaten Alive. There's, like, one other card. A Defenestrate. And that's it. Yeah. Give me a Bloodline Calling over this blue card. Strong card, Blood Thief. A 3-mana 2-2. Two, two. An opponent lost life. Put a counter on something. I mean, that's very good, right? Um, there's also, though, the Ecstatic Awakener. Oh, Midnight Ambush. Okay, we have to have that. Like, another Sea Zombie. Wow. Anyway, Ecstatic Awakener is better if you have a bunch of uh, fodders. Um, but... What about the sea? Oh, sorry, not the sea zombie. The midnight ambush. I don't have a lot of ways to make it night. But it's kind of still good. 
I, that's not true. I have, um, where are they? Uh, four mana? Three mana? I have one of these guys on four and, like, two of these guys on three that can make it night. So it's not, like, super likely, but, it, you know, it, it, opponents might make it night. And this is still just fine. I'm a little reluctant to pass this up, but I don't think I care that much about this. It's 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 the Ecstatic Awakener, I guess, that I'm actually a little reluctant to pass up. Because a one-mana card that A, kills things, which I like, and B, benefits from having zombie tokens, which I like. I mean, I would love this. I would love them both. I'm not going to get them both. There's no way that either of those... I don't know, maybe the Awakener wheels? But there's no way Midnight Ambush wheels. So I guess I'll take the Ambush. Ooh. We got an Awakener anyway. Blood Tithe Collector. 5 mana, 3, 4, Flyer. And it has this ability where if an opponent loses life, they discard a card. I think, like, the ability might not be very good in our deck. Because we don't... I don't know. We have three Sea Zombies. I guess we could make that happen. Anyway, but even without the ability, it's a good card. Uh, pass. Hobbling Zombie is great. Secrets of the Key wield. That's interesting. Okay. I mean, I don't think I'm running it, but you never know. Consider wield. Okay. There's a Bat Whisperer. I mean, I don't really want this. With, with, um, with three Sea Zombies, it'll hit pretty often. But I don't really care that much about the 4-2 or the 1-1 one, one flyer, I think. Oh my god, it, they all the black cards wield. I mean, I guess I knew I was getting past nothing but black, but I just, I never imagined. Okay, well, give me another Awakener then. I don't really want this. This is not the 2-drop this deck is looking for. Duress. Not good. So, like, I don't think we have to run blue. We have enough playable black that we could just run mono black. Question is, like, is that what we should do? Because, like, we could throw in some blue cards for decent value, right? Like, maybe we can cut Ghoulish Procession, for example. Like, I don't know. We have to cut six cards. I could cut four blue cards and then two black ones. And that seems sort of like an obvious thing to do. But it won't be hard to splash a little bit of blue for like Organ Hoarder and Tome. I think probably I should not run... Well, I don't know. I mean, seven blue sources is totally fine to be casting stuff like Secrets of the Key if I need more, like, draw. I think Ghoulish Procession can go. I love the tokens. They're great, don't get me wrong. But I don't have a lot of ways to make them. Oh, I can get rid of Blood Pact. If I'm running blue for draw, I do not need Black's Mediocre Draw. Well, okay, I have also some very good black draw. Um, like, these Shady Travelers, they're good, but I kind of have a lot going on in the 3-drop slot. And I don't think these really are, like, what the deck wants. And I don't know that we need the Behemoth, maybe. I mean, it's so good, though, right? It stabilizes instantly, and it can threaten lethal if we're in that kind of a spot. I think I should probably keep it. I still think the procession is questionable. 
I don't have a lot of ways to kill enemy creatures. Are they going to die much in combat? Maybe. I would really love the, the, the tutus. What could I cut, though? Secrets of the Key. And we're just splashing for Organ Hoarder and Tome. I guess. Ah! Made a dinging noise. Don't do that. That's a Windows update thing. Um... Yeah, I guess. I'm keeping in Ghoulish Procession, which does not seem like I should do that, but which of these cards would I put in instead of a Ghoulish Procession? One Shady Traveler? I think I have enough going on on three. If anything, I have too much going on on five. Or, yeah, five. I don't know. I, I kind of wish I could say, oh, I'm running mono black, but I, those blue cards are good enough to play. Haha, ha, very funny. This is fine. I have a two and a three and some removal. We'll draw an island eventually. Is it just me or is like everything louder today? I don't think I fiddled with any of my hardware or software settings. It doesn't look very loud on OBS, on the like mixer or whatever. Oh, new lands, huh? These are the default lands. Are these, they're not the Midnight Hunt lands. But it's also not the Baldur's Gate lands. It looks all right. I don't recognize it. I'm sure I've seen this symbol somewhere. How would I know what set it's from? Ah, oh, that's right. And Hobbling Zombie, right. It's not, it makes, I was thinking briefly it made the token when it enters the battlefield, so we'd have three for Sea Zombie, but no. Okay, looks like the bots are under drafting black in other people's packs too. <laughs> We gonna midnight ambush this or something? Okay, that's fine. There's a lot of good black removal in this set, right? Besides midnight ambush and defenestrate, which we have, there's also infernal grasp and foul play, both at two mana, which we don't have. Infernal grasp kills like anything for two, but costs you two life insane card foul play removes only small things and it gives you a clue token so you, you get to draw as well oh, come on i splash blue and this is what happens to me i draw my only two blue cards on turn four with no islands this is a highly unlikely outcome i mean i could run 10 7 instead of 11 6 but i don't think that really is that big a difference. Fine.
What is this? A jack-o'-lantern. Okay, mana fixing is my recollection. Yeah. Oh, and also graveyard hate. Are they going to blow it up now for the mana fixing since they're also mono black? No, I guess not. Okay, a sea zombie is fine. This is a kind of fun graveyard hate card. When an opponent tries to return something from graveyard to hand or something, you're like, boop, it's dead. Or more likely, if they have Disturb or Flashback cards, you can target them. Uh, but you have to do so at a time when they can't respond by casting the card. So I guess they wanted the mana fixing, but didn't want it on four mana. They wanted it on five. So that's why they didn't bother to... Po well, it would have been only available, like, right. If they'd popped it last turn, they would have spent one on the Jack-O-Lantern, one on this ability, and they'd only have two left, so... It would be mana fixing for, like, a two-drop in some other color, which is not that great. Okay, you got me. Kind of a shocker that that's what they used their jack-o'-lantern on. But they finally found a mountain with it. Okay, I guess that's what they wanted. What a weird game. An island! We did it! Um... I think we better get started on the, dome, the tome, because... Like, the Organ Hoarder is a fixed amount of draw value. Whereas the Tome draws more the longer you have it out. Now, the Organ Hoarder gets in face damage value, but that's not what I'm worried about right now. I want to maximize my draw, because the board tempo doesn't seem to matter much right now. Wow, what a draw. It's a little dangerous, I guess, to play this out while I'm tapped out because they can just remove it and I can't respond by like making it a 4 4. But I don't know. <laughs> that seems fine. Okay, the rest of my graveyard's in exile. I don't mind. From graveyard, so could they could choose some from my deck and some from theirs if they wanted. Okay, um, well, let's hoard those organs. This looks pretty good. Sea Zombie is also not unreasonable, but I already have one, and I don't really even need the one that I have that badly. So, I think I'll just pass here, right? I could, like, tap this down and swing for three, but I'd rather be able to tap it down so it can't attack me. And this way, I'm also holding open the ability to flip this. Although, like, I won't be as soon as I activate this at, at their end step. Or I guess it'll be at the beginning of combat. But that's okay. I, I don't mind, again, if this is, like, offline for a bit. If they want to use a silver bolt on it, that's, that's fine. I already have other uses for the zombie token in uh, Behemoth, so no worries there. Although this does draw a card, doesn't it? I actually think I should let it attack. And I have this ability as a combat trick. Oh. Well. A 
Okay. I could spend three mana to blow this up and get a card. I don't want that. Do I want to activate Sea Zombie first? No. So this resolves. Fine. They can get in with their zombies if they want. They don't want. As expected. Draw, please. Uh, tapping blue, blue, right? I only have two blue cards and they're both in the graveyard? Oh, in case I'm wrong. And also to threaten blue. I guess I have blue here, so it's a threat either way. My sea zombie not exactly pulling its weight. It's done one damage, but also it's it's been a two two. Oh, you know what? I could have maybe waited to, to play this so that I don't have to um, sack a two two. But I'm not really using that guy for anything, and I would like the extra. I would like to have my 7-6, please. So, so far this has drawn two cards and gotten in one useful tap. At the cost of seven mana. Wow. So it did six damage there. Very nice. Oh, and this is... That has flashback. Oh, but only if you have a Planeswalk. So that's not real. I mean, if a card were printed that said, like, seven mana, draw two, tap a creature, that's horrible. Right? That's so bad. The idea with this is that it's going to draw get me a lot of value over a long, long, long game. Uh, we'll see whether that's actually what happens. But part of the reason it's so bad is that you would have to, you like, it assumes you would be spending all that mana at the same time. If you have the ability to spread that out over several turns, it's actually, like, pretty all right. I think. I don't know. Maybe not. Like, if there was a two-mana card that said pay two to draw a card, that would be pretty busted, right? Yeah. This is worse than that. Oh, no, we spent eight, not seven, because it costs three to start. Yeah. This is noticeably worse than that, but it's still working fairly well, I think. I think I don't mind if they want to make this attack, so I'm going to not tap this just in case they play something more threatening next to, uh, at the end of the turn. Okay, they didn't.
great. I'll keep playing these, I guess. I don't know, actually. There's, there's like, no way out. I might want to have some lands in hand, and it looks like we're just about at the limit of the mana I can want to spend on a turn. So, attack all here. Hmm. Actually, I can hold back the death touch. Well, no, I already have a blocker for their 3-4, but... I don't know... I kind of like having the death toucher back. So that I don't risk getting my 3-4 killed. By a combat trick. Yeah, I don't think I need to rush that much. Let's just do 2 damage. I don't know. I guess I have a combat trick of my own if they try, but it's not a very good one. It's called Light Up the Night, is that right? Yeah. So the flashback involves removing loyalty counters from Planeswalkers, and X can't be zero, so it's illegal for them to use unless they get a Planeswalker. So I think that card just basically doesn't exist, but I guess we could just exile it anyway. Although, doesn't red have cast instants and sorceries from graveyard in this set? So like, I should be getting rid of the defenestrates, I think. Let me double check that. Ardent Elementalist, yeah, three, four mana, two, one. When it enters the battlefield, return target insert a sorcery from your graveyard to your hand. Yeah, so that's that's a way more likely problem than them like having a planeswalker and getting to kill one of my things. What what planeswalkers are even in the set? Arlen, Teferi, Ren, and Seven. Yeah, I mean they're not even going to run any of those. So we'll just get rid of both defenestrates, please. Like I said, I, I don't think I need this swamp, and I might want it in case they try to make me discard stuff. Like, yes, I could run, like, draw the Dread Dreadhound or something, but even at that, I have, what, nine mana on the field? That's plenty. Okay, comfortable win, I guess. Yeah, I guess one of, there's a huge difference between, like, a 9-mana spell, which has to be completely insane, and something you can spend 2-mana on every turn. Because that you can use to fill in gaps. <sighs> Can't do anything till 5. I don't think I can keep this. Great. Looks good. I think I want all the lands, so I'm going to put back the Collector. I guess I can put back the blood tie, Bloodline Culling. I don't have double black yet. But I seem likely to get it, right? Yeah, let's keep the Flyer. Nice to draw something to do on turn three. I could, in principle, activate this on three, but that would involve having to play a two drop first. And then also wanting to do that. Which is, you know, an unlikely confluence. Like, I could draw a Sea Zombie or something. That would be great. I would love a Sea Zombie this turn. Just gotta ask. Uh, but even if I do that, I don't actually want to use the Awakener's ability on the Sea Zombie, so that's why this is still a great card to have. 
I mean, this is a beautiful hand. A, a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 curve, although some of the cards don't really do anything. Okay, found that fourth land, which is what I was hoping for. Glad I didn't keep the culling, because it turns out I don't have double black. And they don't have any creatures. What is green-white doing playing no creatures for three turns? They're like the go-wide deck. With Coven. They must be having a terrible day. Start playing some good stuff now. It's a 4-4. Okay, pretty cool. Um, I could attack here and trade my Sea Zombie plus mana on this guy. But I think I'd rather just get an Organ Hoarder out so that next turn I can ping him and play the Collector. Diagraph Horde looks very good. Well, this 4-4 four four is going to probably want... Well, I bet it attacks because they're going to play like a 5-mana five 5-5 five five or something here. And so they have blockers. Maybe not. If it attacks, I'm letting it in. Yeah, that's fine. So... I now actually have the Diagraph Horde, which I think is better to play than the Collector right now. Well, wait, I have two of them? Oh, I drew one last turn with the Organ Hoarder and then I just happened to top deck another, okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I guess this attack is all right. Or do I want to give them a flyer? I think they actually want to make this trade. So let's not. Oh, I forgot that would work. Yeah, I mean, they weren't about to cast this because it cost seven, but... Just to nip that in the bud is 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 a big benefit of the Diagraph Horde. Importantly, it also makes it less awkward to ping them main phase. Hey, knock it off. Because if I wanted to play the Blood Tithe Collector this turn instead of the Diagraph Horde, I would have had to tap all my creatures to activate Sea Zombie to hit him. Which is not what I want. Yep. Okay. As predicted, they do want this trade, and I'm just kind of going to give it to them. If I, if I don't... Well, I could let them hit me for two now. And then in the future, have something down that stops them from comfortably attacking with the two. No, but they don't mind if the two, three dies. But I could take two damage now to maybe have the Organ Hoarder alive for longer. I think that's probably worth it. Yeah, okay. No, no blocks. I changed my mind. They were, yeah, they were looking for something to do with their mana as well. Okay, happy to have a swamp, I think. It's not useful at the moment, but I do need some more. So... (sighs) 
let's just get the collector down now. I'm sure they have a land to discard, but... They didn't. Wow! What? What discard is that? That's crazy. That that kills my 3-4 flyer. What are these other two cards? Maybe they have another Sun Gold Barrage. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Sadly, I mean, I could activate the Sea Zombie to ping him for one, but that seems very dangerous. They're not attacking, I guess, because if they were, they would have attacked first. Okay, they just drew a land. So whatever card this is, it's better than a second Sun Gold Barrage. I'm really tempted not to play the Diagraph Horde right now. I think I'd like to draw and just keep the Awakener available. Get started on the draw plan, finally. And if I draw a land, I can consider playing the Horde anyway. Because I think that would be pretty good. Like, I would like to have it down. It's a good blocker for two twos. But I have the Awakener, so... I don't necessarily have to. If I miss a land, I can do something else. Uh, I mean, this isn't that good, I don't think, right now. It would get in for one damage, because it would be a sixth creature. Yeah, okay. And it's a fine blocker for the Shadow Beast, if that's what has to happen. I'm also like a little bit inclined to delay playing the um, the hordes until they have something with flashback. This is a zero four. Oh, that has that huge coven ability, right? Okay, that's a little scary. Where's my death toucher, please? It doesn't gain trample, does it? Yep, it does. Plus three, plus three. Okay. Now, I can use Mysterious Tome to tap down one of their creatures, but they can choose to give Trample to something else. So I guess I just tap down their biggest creature, basically. Well, I tap down whichever creature I would least like to attack me while having plus three, plus three. Is this attack any good? Kind of is, right? It's better attacking at night, but you don't always get that choice. I should have done that before playing the Horde, obviously. But, like, what is this trade for? They're 4-4 four, four plus a 2-3? pretty good well okay they double block but and i only get the four four but that's still totally worth i think oh or it just gets to eat a one one great last card in hand is a combat trick okay but they forgot the minus oh no i see it's i only have three toughness this is fine. <sighs> I 
I'm not actually sure what I want to tap down. A 7-7. Seven, seven, I guess I don't have very good trades for that. A 5-6 is a little bit more manageable. I can also just let it in if I want. Yeah, I probably should, right? These creatures are doing useful stuff. Go ahead and hit me for five. I don't want to give them a flyer they can pump either. Oh. They don't want to pump it. Okay. Sure. Well, I know what my next Diagraph Horde is targeting. Morbid Opportunist. Okay, can I cast both of these? No. But I could like draw and Opportunist and Seize Zombie instead of playing this, but no. Getting rid of their, their ants is really important. So that's what we're doing this turn. We don't know they can cast this. Um... but they could easily have a land to be able to cast it, so no sense messing around. Now, if I attack all, is this lethal? Probably not, right? But let's double check. They have five blockers. I have eight attackers, so I get in with three of them. That's a one plus two twos is five, so no. No, uh, six, because I could ping for one more. Just checking. I love that they're not using their Coven ability. So I feel like that's how they win, is pressuring me enough, right? Okay, fine. Yeah, those Diagraph Hordes were absolutely insane. One damage per turn forever because of Siege Zombie, and it comes, it's three creatures. And also, it like exiled an important card from their graveyard. The first one didn't. I just exiled two Defenestrates. But the ones after that hit actual flashback cards, which was nice. And then it's just also very useful on the board. Uh, this looks amazing. I mean, I'm not going to play Eaten Alive on one, but Opportunist, sorry, Specialist into Morbid Opportunist is pretty exciting. And having this as, like, backup removal is nice. Okay, so it's five if you cast it without the special effect. Black-white, I mean, of all the decks that love 1-1s, one this is one of them. Um, but they don't really want to put counters on this for me, so they'll have sack effects, but they don't want to use them. <sighs> like, I could attack before playing this, so they don't know that I have this. I don't know. Like, obviously you want this on the board so that in case they chump, I also draw a card. They're never going to chump, though. I guess I should play this so that if they have a combat trick where they can block and actually kill my 3-3, I still get some advantage from it.
And by the way, eaten alive is exile. So it, it won't trigger either of these two, if, even if I use it uh, if I use it on an opponent creature. If I use this and sacrifice one of my own creatures, that would trigger the Morbid Opportunist, but not the Slaughter Specialist. There's nothing that does anything to this on one mana. They're just thinking about stuff. The only one mana white spell I remember is Blessed Defiance, which is a combat trick. Okay, not unhappy to have gotten some mana. I could attack here. I don't think that's that great. I'd like this to maybe grow larger on its own. And I still get in for one because of the Seize Zombie. At this point, another land would be great. Preferably a Swamp, of course. But also any creature that doesn't cost five. Right? Most of the cards in my deck are hits. Islands are fine. What did they get out of this, by the way? They got life and tokens. Ooh, that's nice. Um, you can have Coven if you put this on itself and one of the 1-1s. One yep. Yeah. Can't really make any attacks, though. And I'm happy to eat and alive that if I have to this turn, if I don't draw anything relevant. Yeah. Who knows, maybe I'll even top deck a swamp. Now, sadly, I'm not going to get the sea zombie ping this turn. I could do it, but then I'd have both of these creatures tap and be unable to use them on defense. I just didn't want to deal with a 3 4. This is why we ran 11 6. I'm a little annoyed that I've gotten one swamp only. It's over a quarter of the deck, and we're more than a third of the way into the deck. Well, those numbers are not really comparable in any interesting way. It's over a quarter of the deck, and we've drawn 12 cards. So you, we should, you should expect to have about three of them. Now that's a card. Um, I'm glad I have Midnight Ambush for that. They're not super likely to have a combat trick that's relevant here. Isn't there like Flare of Faith or something? Yeah, two mana, white instant. If it's a human, it gets plus three, plus three, and indestructible till end of turn. All right, there's the second swamp. I'll just ambush that. See if it works. It does, okay. This is a little brave. I think it's bad, actually. They might have Blessed Defiance. I'll just wait. I don't want to waste creatures dying when I could delay it and get Morbid Opportunist triggers. It only goes once per turn, so that one, one kill was enough for the turn. I think this game could go very differently if, like, that Midnight Ambush didn't resolve. Like, yes, a swarm of 1-1s one is, like, insanely bad against my board, but their deck is going to be built to take advantage of those 1-1s. One -ones. And they do have, like, some long game grind plan, I'm sure. 
So I, I can't just sit back and do nothing and let Sea Zombie kill them. They probably have something that's better than that. <clears throat> but, you know, I have Dreadhound and Diagraph Hordes. Okay. And also just outdrawing them, I guess. I'm a little surprised, actually, they chose that one. Mm, I feel like me drawing is a pretty big threat. Huh. I could actually just wipe all their 1-1s? One -ones? That's kind of cool. I said this wouldn't be good, but like here it is, right? Actually, okay, I should get out the Dreadhound first, right? And then do it, and then it's hilarious. What was my creature? The Sentinel, okay. Maybe they'll make more tokens. That would be exciting, although probably unlikely. Wow, they're desperate for cards. Or I don't know. Yeah. I don't think they're being patient. I think they're desperate. Like, with this on the board, it's pretty threatening. Okay. But I get a card. And like, you know, if I had used Bloodline Culling, they wouldn't be able to do this. But that's fine. I don't really mind them doing this. Well, I kind of, no, I do obviously. I wanted, I wanted this creature to kill them. Um, instant. Okay, so I can try attacking, and if they block and use flare of sorry, bless defiance, I can respond by killing all their tokens. What the hell? I remember this being horrible. Choose a card name. They don't even know what's in my deck. They're just going to pick like the best black cards and say, don't cast that. Diagraph Horde would be on the list. Midnight Ambush. Okay, that's pretty reasonable. Wrong. It turns out I don't have any of those left. But reasonable. This only gets in for one, so it's no great coup or anything. I could attack with both, I guess, and Bloodline Culling. But I'd rather hang on to that and just develop more stuff. creatures in here because black can get back creatures i don't think any of this stuff is ever coming back i think it also would have been reasonable for them to name see zombie But no, I, I think with this board, Sea Zombie isn't what they should be worried about. They should be worried about me play, playing big creatures. I think Diagraph Horde would have been a pretty reasonable call. But they named Midnight Ambush, which is interesting because it suggests they have creatures in hand that they're worried might get removed. Even though it's not yet nighttime? I don't know. They saw that I do have at least one card that makes it night, so that, that makes Midnight Ambush better, I guess. Weird. It has Defender... and can't do damage, and if they get ever get Coven, they can blow it up. That's fine. It exiles, right? Yeah. I think we're well ahead here.
That is a 2-1, sure. Do I want to let the creature die? I have my choice. Right? Like I can, I can. I can block like this to kill just one of them, which is what I want for Morbid Opportunist. They want it for transforming this. Creature with mana value two or less. Like, I don't think they, they don't have any. Why do they want this transformation? That's weird. Oh, I should have used Siege Zombie. No, none of my stuff died. So it's fine. Arrogant Outlaw. <laughs> sure. Okay, let's 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 let the tapped guys rest. They already did their job in combat. Okay. Um. I mean, I don't think I need to play. A diagraph horde today. I like that. Although it seems unnecessary. I forgot that was in the deck, in fact. I guess they're gonna like attack with, no? I don't know, it just seems like they're in a hopeless position. And the attack with the two one ones, I can now, since I've now seen every card that was in their hand at the time, I know it was a blunder. There's Curse of Silence for you, like two mana do nothing. Three mana? What does that card cost? One mana. One mana do nothing. Um, you know, and okay, spending one mana on nothing, not a big deal. People waste one mana all the time. But they spent a card on nothing. That's That's the problem. Toasty Joe, oh, I'd like, no, Toasty, Roasty, it's hard to tell with the background. I think it says Toasty. I'd like to hang out with Toasty Joe. Oh, an actual creature on two, on one, I mean. It's exciting. And the life gain means it may be a bit difficult to pressure them out. I'm not attacking with this, obviously. Really would like an island. Here I am again, drawing this before any of the six islands that could power it. Odds of that are low. One in seven, right? One of the very few cards I could draw that would not help me at all this turn. Dreadhound is like, and Blood Tithe Collector, there's a few. Okay, I mean, they have Coven already. Nothing cares yet, but soon, I guess. funny. Actually, a 4-4 is pretty useful. Yeah, I'm just going to do it now, see if I can draw a land. If I draw it now, I'd like to play it this turn instead of next. Feels bad. That's not how I wanted to play things, but... Uh, oh, 
Okay, that's bad. They must have the plus three, plus three, and indestructible till end of turn trick. I guess I'd rather not take three. Yep. That's something. Uh, okay, let's get the Diagraph Horde out here as a potential blocker for the 3-3 if I'm lucky. We're just going to have to let this go for a bit. Okay, Unruly Mob, also scary. But I have Midnight Ambush for one of those creatures. I'm not sure which. Ugh. That's a 2-2 flyer, but it's only 2-2. Two, two. Okay, there's some blue. So I guess Organ Hoarder and Midnight Ambush something. Mid Morbid Opportunist. I'd like to do that before I Midnight Ambush something. I can't do that right now, though. The mob is going to get huge. Eventually. But part of that is because of this. I could remove this instead. Well... I can wait till their turn to figure out what to do, I guess. So I'm not supposed to play the uh, Awakener now, I don't think. They're just going to want to start throwing away creatures. I think. While also getting in for... Oh, that's sort of fine? I guess they get in for an awful lot. I think with a Death Toucher, I can deal with this 1-1. One, one. I have to win pretty quickly. So, I don't know. I need to get... Maybe, maybe I was supposed to target the Flyer, actually. And just say I don't care about their tokens, but I don't think that's true. Okay. Dreadhound. There's something that puts a stop to most of this stuff, but not the flyer. So maybe I need this first, actually. So that if they attack with tokens, I can start getting a little draw. And I need to be throwing these away to draw cards with them. Because I need Defenestrate, like, fairly soon. Shouldn't have played this, by the way. Activate only once each turn. Okay, so it's I can activate it on their turn if I want. If nothing dies this turn, I can still get draw. The thing is, they have so much life, they don't even care about Dreadhound, right? It's about killing me with that stupid witch. Yeah, I think I might have mis made a mistake killing their token generator. Because eventually I'm going to draw Bloodline Calling and just kill all tokens, right? Uh, 
Uh, hang on. Is that what I want? This creature's about to die. But if I sack it, it won't get a card. I think I sacked this, so I still get the card. Did that do damage to my face? That's that's bad. Eight mana is a five and a three, I guess. Or it could be just a dreadhound. Or it could be a five and a two, a three and a two and a three. Yeah, I need the cards so bad. Oh, this just kills me, doesn't it? Probably. Hmm. Okay, that kills me too. Yeah, I think I was... not properly appreciating how much threat the witch was. Now, I did this... I made this choice before, I believe anyway, before they played their Abandon the Post uh, turn. Yeah, because you can see this is in the graveyard before this. No? Actually, it looks like I'm wrong. Did I really... Did I really kill their token after they used Abandon the Post? I did, because it was the turn they'd attacked with everything. Yeah, that was horrible. I think killing the witch was way better. I would have had to deal with them gaining life and tokens and their their unruly mob getting bigger, but none of those are as big a deal as the witch is going to kill you in like four turns. And it turned out two turns because they had other stuff. Or, or maybe it was like it would have been five, but instead it was three. I, I don't I don't know exactly what life total I was at after that attack. I had a weak opening, obviously, but I could have played it better. Oh, eaten alive. Yeah, you're allowed. You announce targets before you pay costs, so you can target this and you sacrifice itself if you want, as part of the cost. Um, the spell would then fizzle, but if for some reason you wanted to do that, there there are weird scenarios where you might imagine you wanted to. Um, and and that's why this lights up. It is legal to cast. I'm obviously not defenestrating that, and I'm not eating it alive. Let's just attack, and yeah, yeah, as expected, nothing interesting happened. This isn't an incredible defenestrate target, but I'm not going to have a chance to use this mana anytime soon if I wait. Big decision on turn four, it looks like. Eaten alive? No, the Celestis. What a weird tap. One black manually? The Celestis is great.
Uh, I will attack all here. They get their beggar killed, so they have this uh, threat. That's fine. I can eat it, eat it alive. Can't stay away. They got the 2-2 two -two back. Okay. Well, I guess I just don't attack them. I'm not really excited to trade it for their, to trade this for their zombie. Okay, Sea Zombie is nice. That's a way to uh, get some use out of my board here. I could also consider eating alive their Tutu, but I don't think that's a good thing to prioritize right now. I'm gonna fire this off now. Um, the idea being that I'll then sack one of these zombies to draw, which I want to do main phase in case I hit a land. And now I have eaten alive if I want it. It actually looks pretty great to just like kill that stupid tutu and get in with everything, doesn't it? bunch of big lunks that just want to go face okay they're deciding they can't afford to recast this as a flyer so they're just going to use it to block I don't have that kind of time or that kind of yeah I guess time they don't have that, that much tempo really What is that for? Okay, makes sense. Ooh, that hurts. I was gonna use that. This 3-4 basically just bonks into them, which is not great. Yeah, I guess I'd rather it not be tapped. These two are both great to attack with, obviously. If I had a combat trick or could threaten one, then yes, sure, I'd love to attack with this, but I don't actually have one. There's a very small edge case where I could need to play this island next turn. If I draw a tome, play it, tap it, and draw another land. No? No, I can't possibly need this. I'm worried. Opponent might be ahead here. Okay. Does it cost to play again? Four. Which they have. Uh-huh. Oh, they even get the Celestis trigger. Very nice. Hmm. 
I can just play a 7 mana 7-6. Seven, the problem is, if I do that, they can write of Oblivion it and just lose their 2-2. Two, two. But if I wait, are they going to write of Oblivion something else first? I don't think so. I think I just kind of have to play a threat. This also keeps it daytime, which is nice. Yeah, they can't be thrilled to do that. Diagraph Horde would be an insane top deck. I guess that's a thing. I could have waited until I had Diagraph, like, drew one of my Diagraph Hordes before playing the zombie. Because then they wouldn't be able to use this, but I think that's too greedy. Okay, pretty sweet draw, I think. A little bit slow. But it gets in one damage and it makes a potential 4-4. It also threatens to tap down their Death Toucher. Yeah, it's not bad. Although, I don't know, as soon as they get the Beggar in play, yeah, I don't really have much that can attack. Mm, okay. Great draw. I'm very few turns away from death here. I guess I play this. Maybe I have lethal. Ping this down, or tap this down. Yeah, doesn't this kill? If I tap this down and then attack with everything, they have to let in two block, two things. The smallest two do three damage, and this dies, so that's one more. Two more, actually. Because of the death touch, my thing dies as well. Good draw, Dead Dreadhound. I'm I'm a fan. If they had not attacked with the three four, would they be winning there? Sorry, would they be living? I think they'd be living for a little while. Okay, I mean, it doesn't really do anything until turn five, but it at least gets to like develop a long-term value plan and has some removal. So even if I whiff on other spells, let's see this. Sure, mm, you know what? Maybe they're going to pump this, and I really have nothing better to do than kill that, so I'm just going to do it now. No sense waiting till their turn. They're not going to let me like get a better kill on something else, probably. Yeah, see? This creature is insane, by the way. Yeah, letting it turn to night. Okay, defense rate's very good. Ugh, but it's not good enough. 
I'm so dead. All right, I just need to get some stuff on the board. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't see how this is turning out well for me. I can't make it day again, and at night these things are ruining me. Okay, I made it day. The 6-5 is probably a bigger deal than this thing. Even though I hate them both. I could attack for 9. That doesn't seem good. The, the Hound Tamer putting counters on stuff is really good. Uh, but there's not a lot I can do about that. I had to kill the 6-5 first. And just like plan to get an answer to that at some point. Okay, they're just going to flip it back tonight, I guess. But I get to play maybe a 6-6 if I draw a land. And another 3-4 is also pretty good. Racing, I think. It doesn't look like I'm winning the race. But I have a lot of tokens. I don't know. I mean, this is my chance to trade the Dreadhound off instead of letting this continue to get bigger and get like so big the Redhound can't kill it. But I don't know. I guess they're, they're pretty likely actually to have a combat trick and that would just kill me. So let's try that. This way, even if they have a combat trick, we maybe get to kill them unless it's first strike. Just, you know, Lunar Frenzy, for example, is pretty tough to play around. Okay, no trick. Or not one they wanted to use in that position anyway. Okay, a Death Toucher is good. Diagraph Horde also obviously quite good. Do we have lethal now? Surely not, right? I would get in with five dam five attackers. That would be ten. So we're close though. And this is a serious threat of lethal, I think. As well as being a good blocker for their stuff. Right, combine the two of these, they do a good job of blocking pretty much anything. Does that have to be another creature? No, it can be itself. They're at 8 mana, so they could use that twice, but it's still just a 6-6, six -six, so this double block would work. I think we're ahead. I think we might be, we might have won the game already, in fact. No, the life gain is a problem. Hmm. Okay. 
So I have 10 attackers. They would have to let in seven of them. Everything attacks for at least two. So they're dead? Right? Unless they have a trick that gains life? Or a flash creature? Or removal? Uh, removal is something worth playing around, I think. Because if they just have, like, a Moonrager's Slash to do two damage to one of my zombies, then I don't kill them, and I'm tapped out, and I die. So I think we should just hang on a moment. I didn't notice that was going to do damage to me. I didn't even know it was night at the time. There's a thing here, but I wasn't paying much attention to it. I'm really glad they didn't just, like, put two counters on this and then attack, because I feel like that would make me nervous. Maybe it's wrong. I guess a double block is still good. Okay, I think we still have lethal, right? Like, I had it last turn, but didn't take it. And my position has gotten better, not worse. So now I have 12 attackers. They have four blockers. They have to let in eight of them. Yeah, I think we can attack here. Yeah, that Dreadhound came at a really opportune moment. Or, I, I had the Dreadhound, like, in my opening hand, I think. The Sixth Land came at an opportune moment. Um, they attacked into it, which I think was right. Even though, if they had waited a turn, they could have, like, two for, like, they could have, like, had a 7-7 seven, seven versus my 6-6, six, six, right? But, like, you can just double block, and it still just kills a 6-6. Six, six. And in the meantime... The Dreadhound is just, like, threatening a ton of damage if any of my decayed zombies die. So, I don't know. I think it was reasonable. Did they end up having a trick, by the way? I don't think they did. On, uh, like, I, I triple blocked in case they had a trick. And if it had been a first strike trick, I would have been completely ruined. But they didn't have that. Did they have some other trick where a single block would have been punished? I don't think I ended up seeing one. Dustworth. Isn't that um, one of the characters' names in Dust Force? It's like the, the, the janitor guy, right? Great hand. Unbelievably good hand. Needs another land eventually. No, no one drops. This is like first strike ward one. Hmm. And it's a two one flying first striker. It gives everything ward one. That's pretty strong. I think we played the 3 3 here over the Sea Zombie. Yeah, definitely looks that way now. And I'm not going to attack with this. It's a useful, um, like, I don't know. 
obviously after playing specialist it's questionable because it would i don't know maybe i could have attacked with this but i want to be able to block with it right just to block their 2-1 maybe no i don't know maybe i should have attacked maybe i would have welcomed this trade when the specialist is on the board but i'm not so sure giving them the the one two flyer is not that great having something to activate eat alive is good and Ooh. Hmm. 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 Interesting. We can play Ghoulish Procession and eat an alive something, which would make a zombie token. But I want the zombie token to give to the Awakener, and he would, I would have to sack him for eating alive. So I guess what I could do. Now, this costs five if to play without. Yeah, okay, so. Mm. I don't know. I guess I'll just get this out. Or. It doesn't look like anything's dying at the moment. Maybe I'd be better to just get the Sea Zombie so it does one damage. I don't know. Weird turn. Just being patient, okay. Not in a hurry to throw away any of this stuff to get disturbed. Also stuck on three lands, by the way. Which we found out just now. So now I have enough mana that I could play Eaten Alive without sacking anything, which would be nice. Um, it is an exile, right? Yeah. So I'm a little surprised they aren't like throwing away any of their stuff to make flyers. But it's not like shocking. They're, I'm sure they have some reason. So, do I just throw my 5-4 in there? I think I do, right? Them blocking is pretty good for me. I guess they must have some trick to stop me from getting this trade in or something. But nothing can block this at all without just dying. Okay. That was the trick. Fine. Okay. I guess I'll trade like that. I don't really need these sea zombies for anything. I don't want to risk losing this. It's a little, like, bad, I guess. It would be better to make this block when I have the mana that if they try to trick something, I can then draw with it. Yeah, maybe I just let this in. But like next turn I'm playing this, right? So I'm not gonna have enough mana for that trick anyway. Okay, I guess we'll just see what they're up to. If they can startle both of them, I'll be impressed. I guess I could have managed this block. I didn't think that was going to work, but you never know. Turns out it would have. And they get a flyer. But it's just one damage. I'm, I'm not too concerned about that. C. 
six mana. I mean, I could sack this and draw a card and have a 4 4. Seems kind of good. I already have a 4 4, though. Sorcery. Okay. Um. That would make it night again, which is kind of cute, but I think I'd rather just play this guy out. I guess I could have attacked with the 1-1, and then if they block something, I make it a 4-4. But I don't really think I wanted to do that anyway. No attacks. No eaten alive, either. Morning Patrol would... Maybe be a good choice, but I, I want to wait till I can cast this without killing any creatures, which I should be able to. That's a scary one. Although it is just a 3 3 lifelinker. I'm going to have a 4 4, so I'm not too worried about that. I mean, this is also scary, I guess. Maybe it would be more important to kill this than Morning Patrol, in fact. Because they both just turn into 2 1 flyers, but this one's like. First strike and everything has ward. Okay, I found the thing I need to kill. I'm gonna just die to flyers though. Unless something good happens. Hmm. Diagraph horde. I think I don't really care that much about my 2-2s anymore, all of a sudden. And I I do care about my tempo. Getting this down faster is good. Although I'm not sure why. I don't have any way to make use of them. I'm the one on the clock, not them. But I have, I have some pretty big creatures, I guess. Pretty soon I can start chonking in there, maybe. And I'm going to have to if I'm going to ever kill them. Okay, activate this pre-combat in case there's something relevant that I draw. Excuse me. Yeah. Mm, I could wait on the 4-3, I guess. The thing is, this doesn't even trade that well. Okay, I guess this is my only good attack. <clears throat> So much for this getting more value. If they kill the opportunist, I think that's fine. It's sort of. Oh, wait, this has. This surely has Coven, doesn't it? It does. So it's already a 3-3. I guess that's just going to have to be okay, even though I hate it. I assume they're going to like just lose their flyers. 
or lose their, their stuff that lets them get flyers. Okay. Very funny. But I, I have to be pushing here. I'm going to die in a minute. The fact that I'm giving them more flyers is not like a reason that I should not be attacking. Really? They have a trick as well as the ability to flip this, or they just want to gain some life for some reason? I'm guessing they just drew a trick. But if that's the case, I'm kind of in trouble anyway. Oh, that's fine. Well, no, it's not. I mean, they gained life, and I didn't accomplish anything. So they have three in the air, which means if I attack with everything on the ground, the five more they have on the ground kills me. In fact, if I attack with anything on the ground, they kill me, right? Well, I'm not counting these. All right, I guess I'll just swing out and concede, basically. I could live for another turn, but it's clear there's no way out ha -ha, of the situation. I, I need more Diagraph Hordes if I'm going to deal with those disturbed creatures. This is great. Okay, I need another Swamp instead of all these islands, but... I'm not going to ambush that. Do I attack? No, right? Yeah, especially not with the opportunist next turn. Uh, here's this disturbed garbage again. I shouldn't complain. My deck is clearly like doing better stuff than theirs is. Um, I could conceivably ambush that. But Opportunist is going to be on the board in a minute. And not only is it a good blocker for that, it also wants me to wait until kill it before killing stuff. What is that? Kind of nothing, huh? Now, I could develop the Tome this turn. And I think that I will. Well, when exactly am I ambushing them? I guess I can ambush, like... On the same, um, on the turn after I play Diagraph Horde, I can ambush plus activate this. Or on the turn that I draw with Tome or something. Yeah, that's reasonable, I guess. They don't really have any good attacks. They would put counters on the mob, which is something, but I don't think worth giving away a creature for nothing. Oh, they found some attacks. Okay. Presumably on the 2 1 and. Okay, the 3 4. I 
I could double block this and lose only one creature, but that's horrible. Just get a 3-4 out there, blocks everything pretty comfortably. Keeper's good. Oh, I was like, why did they gain life? The veteran, yes. Okay. We convinced them not to attack. Wonder what they're thinking about. And why think about it post combat? Sort of weird, huh? Okay, I don't want to use it for tokens, but. It's nice to have a way to kill whatever big thing they wind up with. I could have made this a 4-4 and then swung with it, I guess, instead of doing this. And then I'd still have the mana for Midnight Ambush if they tried to double block or something. Oh well. Let's just throw this away for a card. And then I'll use Awakener on their turn to kill the other one. And actually, you know, with Midnight Ambush, this might actually do some good. Hmm. Okay. Oh, I forgot. They have the mob. Not too concerned about it. Oh, okay. See, zombie's a nice find. Yeah, that's the right creature to target, because I don't really want to remove it. That's the 3 1 flyer. Uh huh. Yep. <laughs> ah, miserable. This creature doesn't die. So, um, the Horde doesn't get the activation from it. Okay, let's see what we get out of this. Hang on. Should I use that for Siege Zombie first? No. There's no, no set of things I really want to tap. Well, actually, hang on. I could probably tap the Sea Zombie and, like, the Opportunist. And then if I draw a creature, I might get to, uh... Activate Sea Zombie again. Okay, Defenestrate is nice.
don't attack with the one one just in case they wanted to kill it off It's not clear how to use this removal. The ghoulish procession, it is very clear how to use though, right? I guess I can draw first. Oh, whoops, that's too much. Okay, it's fine. So, I have Defenestrate or Bloodline Calling if I wanted. Or I could just play another Sea Zombie and get more damage in. I feel like getting rid of their 1-1 one -one that makes 1-1s one is pretty important. Yeah, let's just defenestrate that this turn. Oh, and that, that lets me get in for more damage with the Sea Zombie anyway. I forgot about the Ghoulish Procession effect. Hmm. I'm glad I stopped them getting 1-1s. One They, they have a serious thing going on over there. I'm not sure exactly what my plan to deal with it is. Wait, did I not? No, I drew last turn already. Okay, so... Run this out. Borrowed time get into their graveyard. They have something that milled? I don't remember them playing that. I don't even know what I should tap down. The flyer makes sense because it's damage to me. I guess there's nothing else they especially want to sacrifice. Maybe I tap down one of the 1-1 one -one tokens so they can't sack both of them. I don't know. Like, they're going to be able to sack both of them sooner or later, right? Let's just stop the one damage while I can. Also, they could have thrown away 1-1's one last turn if they'd wanted to. Ooh, one at a time, huh? I'm not sure about that. Block with Sea Zombie so that if they have a combat trick, I'm losing something minimally valuable. They get value for that, but I get a, trigger, a draw as well.
I have eight mana, so it's enough to play this. Hmm. I guess I should do that. I was hoping I could also activate this thing's ability, but I can't. No attacks. I think we're swarming pretty well. If we can get a few more of these zombie pings in, we might get there. I think if they were going to sack one ones, they should have sacked them both at the same time. Losing only one really helped with my ghoulish procession and uh, morbid opportunist triggers. Oh no, this is only non-tokens. I don't know if I'm even flipping this, actually. Maybe on the turn when I swing all. I kind of... I was going to say, I wish I had like a 2-3 so I could block this without killing it, but I do. I have a 1-3. So... That's cool. There's their borrowed time on... My book. You think the game's going that long, huh? I don't think we have that many turns left. Like, you're at 20 and I'm at 16, but... I'm not so sure about that. Exile it, then return it. I see. So they get a bunch more counters. Okay. And some life, yeah. That's what, four damage per turn from me? That's why I think this game's not going to last that long. I mean, yeah, the book would have been nice. Would, but right now it would just be, it would be, ta I guess it, this turn it would be tapping that, which is pretty cool. Yeah, okay, fair enough. If they could remove both seed zombies, I think they would prefer that to removing the book, but that's not a choice. Okay, how are we in terms of attackers? I have five, 10, 14. They have six blockers. They have to let in eight of them? That would be... Hmm. A one and seven twos? Yeah. I could bloodline culling something to decrease their blocker count, couldn't I? Plenty of time to think. 5, 10, 14. 1, 2, 6. Yeah, so I get in for 8. With 8 of them. That's... This 1 and 7 twos. Unless this is... West Defiance, this should be lethal. So if I make it a 1 and 8 twos, that's 17. None of this stuff has first strike, so this won't go off till they're dead. None of it has lifelink. Okay. Let's kill this.
Now, it looks like they can actually let in two ones and six twos. Oh, shit. They gain life that way. Okay. Okay, that's fine. Um, I'll just wait one more turn then. I missed that. Oh, Eden Alive should make it lethal again? No, because I'd have to sack it. No, this costs five, right? Okay. They gained more life for that. Oh, because this is lead of the battlefield. All right. So I don't think this actually was lethal this turn. But it was very close, and they were going to die shortly. Yeah, see, I told you removing the book was wrong. You you removed it, like, one turn ago or something, right? Maybe two? And it just wouldn't have done that much in the meantime. This is bad? But I have a three drop. I guess I can't be too greedy. Looks like I should have been more greedy. This deck is going to shit on me. If I don't play ones or twos. Ones wouldn't even help. Twos probably won't either. Oh, man. At least they had nothing better to do than add some damage. I remember I played one player who just like had, it was a red blue deck, and they just had like one Voldaren Stinger that they just played and protected and protected and protected and pumped and pumped and pumped. And they got me down to like five with it or something. And then I did eventually win the game, so, you know, no great evidence that this is a killer deck. Oh, this is actually fine. It makes me a lot happier that uh, I wasn't really looking forward to using Eaten Alive um, and sacking my hobbled zombie. Hobbling? Hobbling. Sack a creature. This one. I plan to defenestrate this, but I'd like to see if they're going to pump it first. If they don't, I'll wait till they play something bigger. But since they only have two mana, I'm going to just figure they just don't have anything worth doing. And I'll stop the three damage, which should be important against a deck like this. Great. Now I have the board, and I have incredible development plans. Um, let's get rid of play with fire and consider. Like I mentioned previously, the red decks can recur spells, and neither of these colors can recur creatures, really. I mean, they're not likely to recur spells, either. But it, it's possible. It's in their colors to do so. I'm okay making this attack. If they have a combat trick, that's fine. I mean, it would be better in some sense to play the Dreadhound first, so that if they do get the combat trick, I do some damage to them. I'm not too concerned about that. I just thought, hey, maybe they'll waste their mana on a combat trick instead of countering this. Got one. 
And also my Midnight Ambush. Ooh. Wait, that just does one damage. Okay, so they're cycling it for a card. Oh! So they could have aimed that here, actually. But they were worried I had a combat trick. That's another reason to have not tapped the... To have uh, kept untapped mana while attacking. Because it's a fairly fragile trick to do that. Mm, I don't know. It would still be a, you know, one for ones, and then if I spend a trick, that trick is just one for one with their creature, sort of. So. Put that on top. Yes, please. If I could draw a Dreadhound, that would be lovely. Yes, of course you attack. Uh, I think I can attack with the 3-4, right? I don't know. If they remove the Dreadhound, I guess I'd rather have it as a blocker, and I'm not too worried about pressuring them out. I just need to keep control. Got him for one more. I could attack with these. They're getting in two damage for sure, plus one damage from the Dreadhound, where in the future they might not get in the damage from the Dreadhound, and they might not even get in face damage. I have the Siege Zombie, though, and potentially this, which might want to sack them. I guess, like, if the Dreadhound sticks around, I'm basically winning anyway. I, I don't know. I think the Siege Zombie can get enough value out of these that it's probably wrong to attack. But I, I could be I could be persuaded that I'm wrong there. Like, I don't know. With C a zombie on board, these guys are each doing a third of a damage per turn, right? So I have the chance here to cash them in for three damage each. Where nominally these zombies are two damage eventually. You know, at, at, presumably at some point, most zombies you get a chance to cash in for two damage. Not always, but often. If you double trick this, that's fine. Or I guess just one trick would be enough. Or a double instant or single trick. So most zombies are going to get in for two. Dreadhound gave me a chance to get in for three. Wow. Okay. It's pretty scary. You got, got any more? Am I dead? Not quite. Six, ten, twelve... Close, isn't it? I don't think I need the Dreadhound as a blocker. And it turns out I... Well, hang on. Maybe I attack like this? Because this is getting damage from the Siege Zombie ping anyway. Yeah, let's try that. If they attack with the Festival Crashers again, I'm going to double block. If they attack with everything, I guess that's sort of bad. <laughs> I don't know, but I think it was worth it to put them on lethal. They didn't seem to have another trick, or they would have spent it either on their last turn or my last turn. Okay. Okay. 
Why is this glowing? It shouldn't be glowing. Slashing me to face. Okay, one more trick kills me then? But this kills you. Close one. I I completely forgot they were gonna take all that damage from from the combat. I was just focused on living through the combat, figuring I was gonna kill them next turn somehow or other. Turns out I killed them on their turn. Alright, well we got seven. Can't be too mad about that. In fact, you kind of are required to be happy about it, I would say. Um, any last remarks about the deck? I think this was better than running, um... Well, actually, I don't know. The Organ Hoarder only made an appearance, like, once. Or maybe twice? Yeah, at least twice, I guess, I can recall. And it was good when I played it, for sure. Um... What black card might I have included instead? Blood Pact, maybe? Bat Whisperer? Eh, I don't know. I don't think it would have been so unreasonable to cut both of these and run, like, a, 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 a sec or no, a First Traveler and a Bat Whisperer. I think that would have been pretty reasonable. And I had color problems a couple times, not just, like, when I didn't draw black. Sorry, when I didn't draw an island in that first game. And then again in some later games, as I recall, but... There were times when I didn't have enough black. So, I don't know. I think Mono Black might have been a better deck to run here. This deck was good enough, so that's nice. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.